record for us too. So this is going to be available on the replay. Uh, where do I do? So go into the share screen. Oh, screen. share screen. Yep, and then there should be an arrow that gives you some options, and it'll say allow others. Yeah. Allow. Oh, I got I got the arrow multiple. Yeah. Okay. Allow participants. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, do it now. Yeah. There we go. So show us. Yeah. So basically, so, the depositor is where it's the planet is deposited, right? That's that's what it means. Like where is it sitting? And it's sitting in its natural sign, which is more, you know, more at home. And it's also a retrograde. So this is basically what, what would you say, Julia? I always say like the retrograde is drinking the medicine. So I would say well, like right you're sitting at home, and and you the, the planet is sitting at home drinking the the original concoction of, of yeah. the, brew, the influence at home. So yeah. like sitting home with a, everybody sitting home right now, we re, reviewing what is there should, that it should be happening. You know, what's their purpose, right? Right. And so, so yeah. we look at these are the five that are in their home signs, if you will. Um, Cause Saturn rules Capricorn, in case you guys don't know the symbols, Venus rules Taurus, Sagittarius, uh, Jupiter rules Sag, Mercury rules Gemini and Neptune rules Pisces. Mm -hmm. So in looking at, so this, this is the date that it goes retrograde. And then this is the date it goes back direct. So if you look, we've got Neptune just started going retrograde and Venus comes out tomorrow. So there's this three day period where you have all of these guys starting with Pluto down to here in retrograde for three days. And only Pluto, Pluto is the only one that's not the dispositor, not in the sign that it rules. Right, right, yeah, yeah, Pluto is in Sag, right. Right. And how I interpreted this when I started to see this, um, there's another little group that I do and we were talking about it and I said, you know, this is telling the story of what's going on right now. Yeah. And how I see this is, you know, Pluto is, is the planet that says, hey guys, we're, we, we need you to transform what you're doing. We need you to change. We need to change up how you're empowering yourself. And if you don't listen, Pluto comes and says, I'm going to do it for you. So here we go. <laughs> yeah. This, if you yeah. look at this, this started, you know, so it starts to feel the shadow effects a few weeks before. So it started right about the peak of when the quarantine ramp down started and all of that. So here we are, we're transforming the world. Mm -hmm. Saturn is your structures, your, your um, hierarchy, your governance, your father figure. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to transform and we're going to start really thinking about what that means for our structures. So... Yep. Then two days later, Venus goes retrograde and it's like, okay, we're going to transform you. We're going to change your structures now with these new paradigms. What do you value? Mm -hmm. You better start thinking about what you value, what relationships you have. How many of you have experienced some difficulty in relationships mm -hmm. because of what you believe in terms of what's going on? How right. are you valuing your own self-worth in terms of your response? How has your money been affected by all of this? Yeah, it's all value systems. Yeah. Right. So everything changes, you start reevaluating your structures, your values, and then Jupiter comes along and says, okay, it's big picture thinking time. It's mm -hmm. time to expand your thought processes, your mm -hmm. opportunities, mm -hmm. be adventurous. You know, this is new. Mm -hmm. And then Mercury comes along and says, now that you've done all that, let's talk about how we're going to communicate it, yeah. how we're going to exchange the ideas on it, how we think about it, and our daily routine. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, now that all this has changed, Neptune's knocking on the door saying, it's time to surrender. Here it is. <laughs> that's a so good That's how start. I interpret all of that. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So I looked at the transits for the next two weeks that we can go over as well. Okay. I'll that's, take off share too here. Oh, oh yeah. That's Great. one of the purposes of the, the calls. I think I want to do every week is we go over transits and then we look in the future. So we'll see where we're at now and where we're going. And th there's some stuff. There's a lot of Uranus Mercury going on for next week, which is bright. Well, we haven't even talked about the eclipses. I yeah, mean, I have that up too. That's a whole nother. Yeah. Evening. <laughs> oh, um, Melody, uh, Julie, right? Melody was in Australia. Well, right. She did a group, and she noticed she noticed that the eclipse was going over India and China, right? And that's at that time those. Two countries were going to uh, war. Going to war, yeah. And that's eclipse. Eclipse blocks out the feminine energy, so now you're dealing with patriarch energy. And that's like like Donald Trump was born on an eclipse. With with it with the eclipse was in a fucus. Mm -hmm. In the fourth house. 
Yeah. So this is we're lack having of another one, the lunar one, mm -hmm. on July fifth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's gonna be in the Fucus, right? I think that's gonna happen opposite. Yeah. Yeah. That one's in the uh, Sagittarius. Yeah. I think it's a Fucus. It's in the galactic center. Yeah. So we can look at that. We can look at that too with this call. Yeah. So, so yeah. Let me um, let me share my screen. I have I have the chart. I have a few charts up. So, and I have a few articles. We can just go over a few things. That's the purpose. Like we're just gonna kind of bring everyone up to speed so we can figure out what's going on. So yeah, this was the eclipse that just happened, and it was in Gemini, mm -hmm. right? And I, don't, I think they were saying it was in Cancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is another example of how tropical astrology is just, it's just off, you know? And, um, yeah. Um, and it was, it was opposing South Node, which, is, which was an opposing galactic center. You see that? Mm -hmm. So they were opposite of each other. Yeah. And then, like, like Julie was saying, Melody did that, did that webinar, and she was pointing out that it was over China and, and India. So there you go, right? This is the effect. What, what are your thoughts about it being on a cusp, though, of Taurus Gemini? Um, yeah, it's exactly. It's zero degrees, right? So it's yeah. moving into Gemini. Um, it's a, usually when you say cusp, it's a blend of the two energies. Mm -hmm. so it's a blend of Taurus, which is, the, which is what we're dealing with, with Venus retrograde. And it's a blend of, and then it's moving into Gemini. So more about, ex, you know, about to express, you know about to express about values possibly you know some, something along those lines but you remember that venus was was in that in her what they called it the, um, the descent of inanna and if you don't know what that is you should google that and and that's when she goes she's an evening star and then she's she goes retrograde and then we don't see her for a while and then she just starts to appear as a morning star and the story is she goes through the seven gates of initiation during that time. And that's when she's actually conjunct the sun. So she's conjunct the great oneness, right? The sun. And she's shedding. You know, she's burning up because she's conjunct. But the story is she's in darkness. She's going through these seven gates of initiation, which are what I perceive as the seven gates, is, is the seven chakras. So she's reforming. So she died in the West. That's the story. She dies, right? She goes in the underworld. She goes to the West. She goes to the underworld. And she has to go through the seven gates in order to be born again as a human being again. Then she comes out in the East. And then there's a conjunction with the moon. And then there's also on the 27th, there's a conjunction with the Pleiades, with Venus, right? So that's amazing. That's super divine cosmic energy, uh, co cosmic feminine energy. And and I can show you that. There's an article for, for a sky and telescope. I want to point point that to you guys it gives you a list of what to look for during the week so it's pretty cool yeah so that's all going on while this eclipse is going on and then it went direct today or well, it's stationed direct which means it's starting to move direct yeah right so yeah so that this is this is that chart right so we see that's what already passed um i just like lay low i was on my boat i was like Reading and swimming, reading and swimming, reading and swimming. That's it. <laughs> that, that, I didn't even care. Like, that, I didn't even, I'm not even looking at it. Right? But what I did see, which we can all see, is Saturn and Jupiter is in the sky at night. So if you know how to find Scorpio, I think most of you took the class. You can find Scorpio, which is basically the southern Milky Way. Then you look for the tea kettle, which is Sagittarius. And then you do your, you do your little hand work. You go back out about 25 degrees 30 degrees you're gonna see super bright orange it's like it looks like it looks like bright orange like bright orange and that's Jupiter and right next to it you'll see a little bit reddish another another bright but like them that's Saturn and there, there's a conjunction between them so you'll see that in the sky just with your naked eye you'll see the the balls and if you have a telescope you point it there you'll see the rings of Saturn and then you see Jupiter and the bands, the cloud bands. You can see that. And then you can see the moons of Jupiter. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. Yes, yeah, so I was watching that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's go over the week. And then I want to share some articles. And then we can chat. Like we can hang out and like 
share a little bit because I want to just get you tuned up for the week. So this is where we're at right now. Let me just move this. I have, I have this press record thing. So here's where we're at right now. So we have a, we have a Jupiter, the Jupiter uh, Pluto conjunction. And that goes exact next week. So we're in that right now, which is, um, which is what Julie was saying. This is like, you know, what's the big picture and what, what, what's, what's, you know, hopefully we're in the resurrection stage right now. Pluto is Scorpio. So hopefully we're in that stage of like, we know what needs to be done. We've lost what we lost. We put it to rest. We made amends, you know, hopefully we're there because, because now the bigger pictures can start to show up. Right. Cause especially now at that same time right here, um, Neptune went, is starting to go retrograde. Right. So here we kind of like in that space and then it goes, it starts to go retrograde. So we go inwardly and we surrender to what maybe the visions could be. So maybe we can tap into what our visions are, our dreams are, but it can be confusing. Right. So, cause Neptune is, uh, it's confusing as well. It's escapism. But if you use it the right way, if you know what's going on, it's actually surrender. Surrender to the great abyss, to the oneness. So this is a good time to kind of start really just surrendering and seeing what shows up. And here we have today, here's the, the, uh, the Venus station direct, right? And she goes exact direct on the 26th. Okay. So let me just uh, shut that off here. Okay. And then... What's really cool and interesting, which could be a little, well, if you know what's going on, you'll be okay. This is why we're doing this, right? Sa uh, um, Mars and Saturn are having a sex style. You see that? And let's just open that up. Let's do this here, this wheel. So you want to pay attention whenever Saturn and Mars, because Saturn and Mars is, is frustrating. Because Mars is the ram, boom, wants to go forward, wants to assert self willpower just wants to go ahead and just expel energy saturn wants to contain and refrain from expelling only when it's the right time when it's optimal right so saturn is like ai artificial intelligence that knows when it's the right time and and, and um and aries is just the sledgehammer it's like we can just start slamming it right now and and and, and saturn is like well no why don't we wait until like it rains it'll get soft and then, you know, <laughs> so this is what, what we're dealing with. And that, that, that's kicking up. And it's a sextile, so things could be good. Because you have Mars at that time. Mars is in, is in Pisces, while Neptune is retrograde, right on the cusp of Pisces and Aquarius. You see that? So this is spiritual warrior. Mars in, air, Mars in Pisces is a Neptunian energy. So this is pursuing now. This is like moving forward like a warrior do, through this, this either dreamscape, surrender scape, or uh, delusion scape. It can be anything like this, like this abyss. Mars is going to put you through it, which is great. It's a good energy. And then Saturn is, in, is right on the cusp. It's right there between Sag and Cap, right? It's about to go into Cap. So it's like, it's like right... Well, it wasn't cap for a while. So it's going to get to cap sad. It's like in between. So we're dealing with that energy of like knowing, knowing, knowing. Wait, wait for the right time. Knowing. Wait for the right signal. Tap into your intuition. Because remember, this Jupiter Pluto is conjunct. So this is the shaman. This, these are these are the king planets. These are the dominant king planets right now. So that that's this week. So this week is kind of setting you up for what's going to happen for next week. Because next week is an interesting week. Next week is a, I, I was like, okay, so that ends on the 29th, right? Plu, the, this, the Pluto, the, uh, the uh, Jupiter Pluto, let me open this up. Jupiter Pluto goes exact on the 30th, right at the end of the uh, right? Yeah. So, so that hopefully we're going to be on the upswing of what needs to be resurrected and rebuilt and bigger vision, the bigger ideas, like, like that type of like, you know, stepping up to the game now at this point. All right. But, but, but check, check out what I noticed, right? Mercury and Uranus sextile. 
Sun, Uranus, sextile. Sun, Mercury, conjunct. So which means Mercury and Sun are conjunct. And then the sextile on Uranus, okay? And Uranus um, is in Aries. And I want to point something out for you right after I read that. I, don't, I, I have a book that I'm reading. It has nothing to do with astrology, but it mentions astrology, which is really cool. So, so this Mercury and Uranus, they're higher. Mer, uh, Uranus is a higher octave of Mercury. So this is communications and freedom, no limits. So, so communicating, communicating freedom communicating no limits. So Saturn represents law and structure, right? And that's the Mars Saturn thing that we're dealing with. Moving in is last week, moving into to next week. So this week, moving into next week. Then Uranus, U Uranus and Mercury, Sun, Uranus, Sun, Mercury. So basically Sun conjunct Mercury is sextiling Uranus. So that means communication broadcasting usually is what you see when when you're dealing with mercury and uranus Broad, so we might see some stuff in the news that is just like totally free like like will set a whole new tone towards a new like something that just gets revealed i have a feeling that's what's going to happen there's going to be some freedom that's going to come so keep an eye out for that that that's all kicking up all around, like up to the second, right? And then we have um, that that new moon. Mm -hmm. oh, actually, a full moon, right? The lunar, mm -hmm. the lunar. Uh, you're right. You're right, uh, Kat. It's in Sag. Uh, I I got confused because uh, the south node is conjunct galactic center. So so it's uh, I, I'm not. Mm, will that be? Yeah, it's an eclipse because that node is right there. Okay, yeah, that's mm -hmm. an. Uh, that could be an eclipse. Yeah. I'm not sure where we're going to see it. I don't know. Does anybody have any info on that? Where we're going to see this eclipse? Uh, we can look that up. That's easy. Yeah. So that's, this is next week. So next week is information that's going to set us free almost. Right. I think that's what's going to happen as we're kind of restructuring. So we're going to have that. So I picked up this book, right? The Great Transformation of 2021. It's not even astrology, but something told me this some, something, ab something about this is going to tie into astrology. I know it. Okay. And then, so I'm reading, and you know, I'm reading a few books right now. So, you know, I kind of, I'm not that far on this one, but I'm going to read you something. So notice this, right? And this is another example of how sidereal astro I'm, tropical astrology is out of alignment. It's just the, the out of alignment means a big deal. And, and some people say, whatever, no, but, but and there's always an argument. And already, all of you took my class. So already, I bet you, you've already had about five arguments, right? Yeah. All right. So guaranteed, right? I can put money on that. <laughs> Especially all of you are the passionate ones in the classes, I remember. Okay. So look at this. Uranus is in Aries. Aries is the beginning of a cycle. Aries is the beginning of the zodiac, right? Uranus starting new again. It's 84 year cycle is beginning one more time. It's starting its own zodiac. So if we, if we, if we tuned into what astrology was about, we, we dealt, we talked about in the classes, macro and micro, right? Above, below, above of the great gods, right? The planets. And we resonate with the planets. We're connected. Remember we talked all about the quantum entanglement, you know, Electric, you know, string theory, all that, that's all clear. So we're, 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 we're like a lower octave of what the planets are going through. So the planet of freedom, liberation, limitless, new, 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 no bound, no boundaries, you know, individuality is starting new again, starting new again back. I forget what the dates were. Um, Julie probably knows because she's good at all the dates, but I think it was in, it might've been like November, right? Julie, if you're there. Do you remember? For what, say the question again. I'm sorry. When, when did Uranus exactly go into Aries? Do you remember that day? I know we were talking about it. Um, it was like November, probably, right? It was like November. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Actually, I yeah. can find it. And plus, I posted a link to the path of the eclipse. Oh, oh cool. cool. Oh, great. All right. It's in the chat. Everybody look at that. Yeah. All right. Mercury and Gemini. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Julie, Julie, Julie took the private master class with me. So we had nice one-on-one -on -one, um training so yes. yeah it was great 
Right. So new, right? New, new cycle. So here I'm reading through this book. And, and like I said, like th this book is like all about like algorithms. This is basically a guy who's doing math and he's realizing that we're, that earth, that the planet goes through cycles and he's and the, way, way in the beginning of the book. I noticed, Whoa, he, it, it, he's dealing with 180, like right here, it says 84 year cycles right in the beginning. And I wrote Uranus, whoa. And then it's 168 years, which is Uranus times two. So if you look at a sine wave, right, you have the up and the down. So that's the 80, that's the 100 and that's the 164 year cycle, right? 168 year cycle, which is 84 times two. Uranus's cycle, full on, you know, return, right? So I'm like, okay, this is interesting, right? So I'm reading, reading. And here's, I'm gonna read from you here. Um, Within the and this is a this is a mathematician, right? I'm I'm just trying to. It's just not a, this is nothing to do with astrology. This is not like you know, you know, Age of Aquarius, you know, the crystals and shit. This is like a hard ass scientist, right? He goes within the solar system can be found countless cycles whose periods last anywhere from mere seconds to decades or longer. The those not directly related to Earth, but but it but itself, but rather with other elements in the cosmos are known as astrophysical cycles. It could be so shown that these cycles exert an influence on biological function in here on earth. Then virtually any observable rhythmic behavior of living organisms could theoretically be tied to some external force in the universe. So this is a scientist mathematician is like, wait a second, these cycles that are going on in the world, you know, which is like, you know, you know, wheat, wheat yield, the stock market crashes is tied to what he referred to right now as some external force in the universe, right? And then uh, he goes in to say, we examined the distribution. Snow is another scientist, found the strong peaks materialize at regular intervals at time zero hours, at time 24 hours on Earth Day at 27.28, possibly related to the axial rotation of the sun, and the three time intervals close to one Earth year, 364.4, 365.2, 366.6. These experiments categorically point to the existence of universal factors that influence the shapes of the histogram, histogram meaning this timeline, right? Schnoll concluded, it follows the idea of shape the fine structure of distribution of results measurements process the diverse nature is determined by cosmological factors, <laughs> right? So this guy, right, is talking about that. Then he actually re references the book that I read when I was studying and I shared with everyone in the class about uh, Pierre C. Seymour, the scientific proof of astrology. He then turns his attention to that book and starts reading that book to figure out the, uh, tune into the musical spheres, the, the music of the planets. So now he's like paying attention to, whoa, what's going on with the planets? So then he's starting to talk about Uranus and Neptune and the planets now, right? So there is, there is something that, that happens with, the, it's actually happening. Uranus is in a new cycle, it's in Aries. So, so that's what's up, right? That's what we're dealing with, yeah. So change, right? So then, um, I'll just want to just share some articles with you. So here is like, I just sent this over to another writer just the other day, right? Here's like, this is from the Astro Twins. <laughs> These are like famous tropical astrologers. And they, right in their story, they're like, the actual constellations have shifted over the ages. But Western astrology follows a different system, which uses artificial constellations. And I'm just like, I'm like, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> okay, like that's a story that these are the Astro Twins, right? You know, the Astro Twins, they're the most famous astrologers. They have articles everywhere, Cosmopolitan Magazine, all this crazy stuff, all right? So that's, I'm going to close it because it has a lot of ads. It takes up that bandwidth. So this is just showing you, right? Um, this is um, Susan Miller. This is that article by Susan Miller. Is there a 13th sign? She also talks about it. And she also talks about precession. Um, and she also talks, she addresses it 
but then she then goes back to tropical astrology. So, I mean, if anybody wants these articles, I can put them in the chat if you want. All right. But yeah, so that's, that's there. Okay. So, um, yeah. So here's that article I was talking about, the sky and telescope, uh, week at a glance. So every day it tells you what's going on. So I'm going to put this in the chat so you guys can have this. Okay. Hold on a sec. Just going to put it right here. So it's pretty cool because what, what it, what it points out is like, you know, what, what, what's going on in the 2020, uh, like today, right? 24th, the moon, we look for the moon is, is, uh, is in Leo. See the backwards question mark? One hour after sunset, you'll see a crescent moon and it shows you the image. So that's a kind of cool thing to look at, right? 25th, well, um, this is what I like, the 27th, 45 minutes before sunrise. So this says Venus as the morning star could jump Pleiades. Right, this is a beautiful scene. This is this is Pleiades and Venus in the, in the sky right before sunrise. So, so figure out when sunrise is for you, and then boom, there you go. So this is pretty cool to have. And then it talks about when the planets are, you know, Jupiter and Saturn, which I just told you about. Right, you can kind of read up on that, and 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 this is what you can see in a telescope, sort of like that. A little bit smaller, less detail, but that's that's kind of what it looks like. You can see that, yeah, through yeah through my scope. So yeah, I just wanted to share that that article with you, you know. So that's cool. So does anybody have anything they want to like chime in on or or, or like like talk about or whatever? Because I'm just at this point, I'm going to kind of share a few articles with you, so you have from because I do that that weekly newsletter goes out every Sunday. It's called Celestial Digest. So. Yeah, you should get it if you're, you should get it. You, you, you should be on the list. You should get it. You, yeah, you'll get I have to it. go on your website. Yeah, and just sign up on the, on the mailing list there. And every week I share cool articles with you that just bring, that just highlight information, you know? So like this article was in there. To, I didn't get to read it, but one article you said is that the Mayan uh, and the calendar actually ends this week. Yeah, you see that? Um, Let me pull that up. I have it. So these are all the articles. Um, yeah, that that they 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 recalculated the Mayan 2012 um, calendar. You know the Bak 13 Baktun calendar, and they said it was right here. Here it is. We'll open that up. And they said that based on the new calculations, that it's going to end on the 21st. So we don't know. You know whatever. But you know this was in the post. This was in a few things. The mind unleash. But yeah, scientists spreading reading the right Mayan calendar. Um, it says that it's going to end. Let me just get rid of this here. So it just talks about it here. I can, I, I can throw that link in, but somewhere in there, it says, uh, it says it's going to, it's going to end. Yeah. This week. So, so it was supposed to end on the 21st, I think that's, they did the recalculations. So, I mean, it obviously it didn't end. And it wasn't really about ending, you know, that's all like a myth. It's not ending. It's basically, it's basically, um, let me put that here. It's basically ending a, a cycle, you know, the fourth, they call it the fourth world. That's the Hopi prophecy, you know, also. So everything is tying into an old system, an old paradigm is, 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 is about, we're making a choice. The old paradigm is, is at a choice point. And that's if who I don't know who was on that webinar. Let me close this. It's eating up bandwidth. The webinar we did uh, with my friend about the Hopi prophecy, prophecy rock, which we have a choice point. You know, we choose the road, you know, that is disconnected from the heart path, and then it ends. We choose the other road, which is connected to the heart path, and it just it's infinite. So this is the choice point we're at. And, and that's what everything is pointing to with the Mayan calendar at the 13th Baktun, which was in the galactic center, which was winter solstice, right? On 1221, which is the sun on the winter solstice is in the galactic center, which is what the Mayan said at that point, right, right when the sun is in a great rift, we're going to start to go into this new paradigm. We're going to start to go into this choice point. So, that's what that was about. Yeah. So anyway, that, that's a, that's an interesting article. 
Um, I shared this article. I don't know who read this about a fucus in the temple of Dendera. It's the Egyptian temple of Dendera. And they're tying a fucus in with the temple of Dendera. Right? And that's that ancient Egyptian. I think most of you might have seen this image. That's the zodiac that they found at the temple of Dendera. It's ancient. It's crazy ancient. And they, they tied in a fucus and Imhotep um, to that, right? And they said something about what I was reading here was something about a relationship with Saturn. Saturn stands between Libra and Virgo. So they were kind of relating this to a fucus. Saturn was recognized to the ancients as the ancient, uh, ancient of days. So they were, they were kind of taught in here. They're talking about how Saturn sort of has a relationship with, with, um, with the fucus being with dealing with Libra and Virgo and Libra is the scales of judgment, right? That's right before Scorpio, which is where, and then you go to a few, uh, Scorpio and the fucus. So that's something that they talked about. And then I wanted to share my uh, screen. Let me just stop sharing. I want to share a little video real quick because this is something that came up. Uh, share computer sound. All right. This is something that William Henry did. I might have shown it a couple times. I'm not sure. But this was a video. Uh, well, here it is. It's over here, actually. Let me pull that video up. It's going to take, oh, here it is. This is with William Henry that talks about, so we all know like the, re, the, the great, the one, the, the one who knows the way, let's say, the grand shaman, the great leaders, or the great shamans of all the cultures, all we see are pointing towards the galactic center, you know, the 13th Bakhtun site, 13th Zodiac sign, Ophiuchus, all these signs. So then that brings us to the, the, the main religion we're dealing with now, which is uh, Christianity, Catholicism, which is Jesus. And William Henry did a story, and I pointed it out, that you see Jesus moving through the galactic center holding a sickle. The sickle represents Saturn. And that's what in the, the, the story of, of, of Fucus in the Temple of Dendura is talking about Saturn. And then the sickle, right? So I'll play this for you real quick. And uh, can world, you hear it? And on top of yeah. Yahweh's okay. holy mountain, whose base was rooted in the depths of the underworld You'll see and his highest reaches, the highest Jesus coming out holding a sickle. Which sounds like it's something out of Men in Black 3 or something. And it stretched into the farthest heavens. My investigation has led me to think that this is the center of the Milky Way galaxy that we're talking about here. This is where the throne is located. We're way out here on the Orion arm of our galaxy. All the good stuff we want is here. But there's no bridge, there's no rope, there's no ladder, there's no apparent way for us to get from Earth to the center of the galaxy or Scion. Or is there? There are numerous traditions that talk about our alignment with the center of the Milky Way galaxy, including the Mayans. They also describe transportation systems that link Earth with the center of the galaxy, and that's what we're going to be exploring. This is an actual image of the center of the galaxy. Shigura A-star is located right beside the black hole at the galactic center, 26,000 light years away. This is a NASA photo of the center of the galaxy, and I just find it absolutely remarkable that as the Mayans tell us we're going to be making this incredible transition in 2012, that now we have the Hubble Space Telescope, we have the Chandra X-ray Observatory, we have the Spitzer Space Telescope that can all pierce the veil of the galactic center. And now we have this incredible imagery of our galactic core. And I don't know, I don't think that's by coincidence. I think that what we're talking about here is a new morning for humanity. You're right here, a he has a sickle. We are sinking with the energies from that and galactic zodiac center. Will. Call it Scion or call it whatever you want. And it's going to have a profound effect on our civilization. So when I see Jesus in his resurrected form, in his light body form on his throne, I'm connecting that with the center of the Milky Way galaxy. I'm suggesting that he has gone through the wormhole and now dwells in the center of the galaxy with a whole group of other ascended human beings. 
So here he is on his rainbow throne with the open gateway behind him, presumably the gate that links with Earth. And our objective is we're all down here, and all the good stuff we want is up here. But again, we don't see a bridge here or any kind of a link. We're trying to get out of this area down here, out of Earth, the chaos of Earth, up to this realm of peace called Scion. See the same thing here in this painting from the Louvre where the... Okay, that was it, yeah. So let me just uh, close out of that. So we saw how he had that sickle and we saw how it looked like, it looked like, it looked like the Temple of Dendera, right? It looked like that image right here. You had all these people that represented um, the zodiac signs. And then he was in the middle. And I probably showed this to a few of you before with the Mayan cosmology where they show the Shaman King sitting right in, in the Milky Way galaxy. And, and, and he's in a, like on a cacao mushroom journey, going to the other world, talking to the elders there, grabbing information, bringing it back. So this is just something that I was just like, whoa. You know, and this is just showing you more evidence of, of, of there is strong connection to, you know, the celestial influence of the ancients. And that's why I was saying, like, you know, all this change that's going on. Okay, so basically what I was saying was that, that book, which, where did I put it? This book here, right, was written in 2010. Okay, so the point... I'm really gonna. We know that we're going through changes, right? And the ones of us that are kind of in this like higher road, we want the changes to be good. We want freedom. We want like liberation and stuff like that. But then we also have to remember, and it, it sounds a little bit conspiracy theory, theory type crap. But the ones who are kind of controlling the large systems that run our system that we live in also know about this they know true idea astrology so they know that aries right that uranus the planet of change right and and new and, and liberation and newness is gonna start a cycle again they all read this book <laughs> is what i'm trying to say they all know that we're we're about to change and this there's, there's like a manipulation of that energy Instead of allowing it to flow naturally and us evolve, there's a manipulation. And that's what we have to be aware of, of where that is. And that could be helpful for us, right? And not to go around like broadcasting it, but just know that the other, the other side or whatever, if there's another side or whoever's keeping us, right? They know too, what we know. So just pointing that out, right? They know all this ancient knowledge, just like us, right? So, yeah. Well, that's also why things, because if you notice, every revolution happens in March and in November. So when you really go back in time and you look at the way things lined up as far as timing, there's, and I mean, I just Googled how many times our revolution started in March and November, and I okay. was down, do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. It was it was kind of creepy yeah so, timing has really been tripping me you know yeah to mention it's in the throat shot there's just uh, not to get all mystical yeah. and trippy with it but the coding guidelines i'm a medical coder yeah and oh. the guidelines around covid are unfucking presidented yeah thank you for saying that <laughs> to the and point the where any you. statistic that you're receiving is straight oh, shit. shit. You yep. could yeah. fall down and break your fucking leg and they're going to have me code that shit as COVID. Oh, yep. really? Wow. Yep. I swear to fucking yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's That's very no incentive for it. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I I speak with the, you know, respiratory therapy. This is a common cold. Like, this is a common, anyway, and it's an yeah. election year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we're so, being that we're in a state of emergency, so they have control over our laws. Yeah. I'm just calling bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's, let's not go so conspiracy. Sorry. Let's know that's going on, and let's know how to, like, keep ourselves optimized, because. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking for angles of, 
like I'm knowing what's up and I'm like looking for angles of opportunity. I'm like, I know what's going on. I'm looking for, you know, this, like, you yeah. know, like, cause like shit, man, like I, I get, and I mean, most of your friends are me on Facebook. I get crazy about this stuff because I feel the same way, but I want to point one, another article. Cause I, um, what time is it? It's getting late. Uh, this, it was on the newsletter. And if you're not on it, just sign up on the email list. This is freaking awesome. I'm going to put it in the chat right now. Let me just do this real quick before I even talk. Because this is called, this is called the Ascension Glossary. All right. So this should be like, um, oh my God. What do we do all the time when you look something up? Uh, holy Google? shit. Huh? Google? Google? No. Oh my God. Not Google. Um, oh my God. Julian Assange. What, what's the... Oh, oh, WikiLeaks. Wiki, Wik, Wikipedia. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm like, because everything on the internet is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is like the Wikipedia of like, of like what we're doing, right? So it talks the laws of the galactic zodiac cycle. And it talks about um, the magnetosphere. It talks about a fucus. Okay. And it talks about the cycles that we go into, the stages of the galactic uh, zodiac cycle. Right. And it talks about what we go through all the stages of Aries, you know, what, 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 what all this is. And you should have this and apply oh, this to God. your practice. Right. This fit is, so it talks all about, you know, a few kiss. We're in alignment with the cosmic ether and the galactic center. And the ether is, is the dark energy, dark matter. It's the space between us. Right. It's that it's that what it's what makes astrology work instantaneously, which is string theory, which is electric universe, which means everything's connected through the web. Right. And, and here it talks about this. We're, we're aligning with this right now. So this is what we need to focus on. Like like cat, like when you see all this crazy shit, you need to go like, whoa, I'm aligned with the ethers. So are they. They're manipulating I'm not. What's the natural rhythm? So when you start to tune in, this is why I'm, I'm hoping I can stick with it on a weekly basis because you look at weekly, weekly, every week, what's going on. And you just at least know what's going on. And you know, like, okay, this is the way, this is what's going on that with that, you know? So that's really, that's, that's, that's really helpful to know that. And I've kind of fell off that path for a while because I've been busy, but I want to try to make this a point every week so that you stay on I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I need direction because I'm just out here going, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all are. Yeah, yeah. So just, just know that it, this is like the natural galactic cycle right here. The galactic zodiac 13 constellation cycle will be an intrinsic in, part of tracking the spiritual ascension of the planet, the transmission of stellar forces and alchemical laws upon Earth. So this is like the shit right here. <laughs> so I hope everybody got this, you know, because this is like, I found this and I'm like, oh my God, I got to share this with my people, you know? So, yeah. And just to let everybody know, but, and I posted it in the chat, just before we sign off, if you click down where it says everyone file, and there's three dots, click those three dots and you can hit yeah. save app and it'll Ooh, save yes. it in a file. So you don't have to jot everything down or try to get the websites. Okay, good. So it'll save it in a file for you. Nice. Yeah, I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to remember that. Yep, that's great. So what, we'll save this in all the links. Yeah. Um, Actually, yeah, you can save it, Ike, and then post it. Uh, if you have the capability of posting it as a file in the Sidereal Revolution page. Oh. We don't have access to post as a file. Oh, I, I, I do? Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll just, so I do it at the end, right, to make sure I get everything in there. Yeah, just before yeah. you sign off, click the yeah. save chat. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, cool. So I'll, let me put the website. Whoever does, I mean, I think everybody has my website, right? But I'm going to put mm -hmm. that in the chat mm -hmm. because I, I noticed we had a lot of, I had a lot of new people register today. Um, so I, I don't know how they found it, but hopefully that's a good thing, right? So that's the website. Um, let me just see if any other articles I want to share. Uh, As you're grabbing, I, I put a note in about. Uh, Uranus and Aries. Yeah. So it entered April 2019 and it stays there till May of 2024. 
So we yeah. have a five year cycle with Uranus and Aries because of course it's a slow mover. Yeah, it's slow, 84 years, right? Right, and then there was a little blurb that said, the true self on fire. When Uranus enters Aries, <laughs> the side of ourselves that has been floating in the ether since March, 2008, yeah. right, comes out from behind the scenes with energy and vigor. Wow. effect. Remember, Uranus is a collective. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's uh, it's a, it's uh, Aquarius related to Aquarius. Yeah. Yes, it's collective. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love it. Yeah. Let me give you this article. This was something. Uh, have you heard? Have you heard of the Nap? Uh, the Napta Playa is in Egypt. It's like it's basically Stonehenge of Egypt. It's older than Egypt. I mean, it's older than Stonehenge. It's seven thousand years old. I forget how old Stonehenge is. Um. But uh. This is what it looks like. It's the stones. So if you watch the, the Robert Bilval did that movie. It's, it's the Pyramid Code, right? It's on, yeah. it's on Netflix, right? Yeah. He travels to this. And it's crazy because, like, this is in the middle of the desert. Like, I think it's days of travel through the desert. And they journeyed and journeyed. And this is all it is. But all of these stones have certain celestial alignments. And if you read the article, you'll get more information on that. But, oh yeah, here it is. Uh, uh, Stonehenge is 5,000 years old. This is thought to be 7,000 years old. 7,000 years old. Stonehenge is 5,000. But then the new, the new it'll come out next week's um, uh, Celestial Digest. They found another circle around Stonehenge that's older. I don't know the detail. I have the article, but I, uh, I, I might be able to find it. But So anyway, you'll read it in the next um, Celestial Digest. But yeah, it's older. So it's the shit keeps getting older and older and older and older. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of what we're, you know, what we're dealing with right now. Um, this is really cool that you might want to share with mainstream people. Let me give you that. This is, uh, I put it on Sidereal Revolution, so a lot of you saw this as well. I wrote... Um, that this writer did a great story. Uh, mainstream, this is all mainstream, like, you know, kind of what's your nail polish kind of people, right? But but she really gets into the Zodiac and she really gets into why it's off. She gets into, she even covers precession. She, she covers like, she covers a fucus. Really great, but she's a mainstream, right? So she, she you got to forgive a little bit of, you know, whatever, but... She did a real, I think she did a really good job. So read this and this could, you know, she talks about the rod of Asclepius connected to, to a fucus. So she did her research. Um, she, a fucus has popped up before, you know, there's the staff right here. So she really, she really went the distance and I, and I, I think it's awesome. So I, um, I think I even sent her a note too. So yeah. So anyway, it's in the chat. And here she talks about tropical, you know, Sidereal reverse tropical. She did a good job on that, right? Why it changes, you know. So it's, this is awesome. So I just wanted to make sure you had that. That was good. And I think those are the, pretty much the main articles I wanted to share with you. But hopefully these emails go out 10, I think 11 o'clock in the morning Eastern time on Sundays. It's called oh. Celestial Digest. So just don't delete, don't avoid, don't, don't pass my emails up, man, on Sunday. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah, I love it, too, because I read so much during the week. So I'm like, wait, I need to share this. And this is what so I figured out how to do it. So I just share the articles in this new software, and it populates them, and then it sends them out for you. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. I'm done with my speech. Anybody want to want to just chill out and talk? What's well, like, I'm going to stop sharing. So I want to see everyone. So, so what's up? Oh, hey, Jonathan. I see Jonathan is on. Yeah, what's up? Oh, Destiny's on. Lou. Okay. I don't know who Kika is. Hi, Kika. And Kay. So we have new people on. Yeah. So I don't know. Who has anything to say for a few minutes? Because Hillary's on her way. She'll be here at like 8. So I'm out. I'm at 8. I'm coming back to Michigan. I'm out. I'm not, you don't see me um, for a couple of days. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Isaac, I have a question. It's Jonathan. Um, hey, what's up, man? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good, yeah. Tell me. Um, I guess I'm curious about um, 
uh, I think later this month, yeah. uh, the, the second Jupiter-Pluto conjunction happens. Yeah. And, and um, so, so I just was wondering, you know, um, because the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction seems very associated with the COVID. Yeah. Um, and already it seems like either the first wave is getting worse or there's a second wave in, you know, happening. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just your thoughts on that, just your, you know, or anybody's um, input on that. Yeah, let, let some people chime in. I see Julie is like sitting, biting her lips, she knows a little bit, and Kathleen. But what I, let me just say real quick what I think. So um, what I saw, and this is what we talked about all last year. That's why I was doing YouTube videos. I'm like, something's going on. Saturn-Pluto conjunction. We're going to have a system reset. And I thought, and all, I think all of us thought it was the uh, impeachment. We thought, okay, that's, that's the reason. But it went exact, um, Julie knows dates too, right? Oh, well, I think January 12th, uh -huh. right? January 12th, Saturn, Pluto. Yeah, went. January 12th, that's right. Boom, right? And that's exactly around the same time that it kind of was like, it all came out in China, right? It was like, boom. And then I, and then I remember looking at some medical astrology books, which I'm really not into, but I kind of look back. Saturn, Pluto, um, represents could represent tumors sickness ah. and i totally didn't connect that oh maybe i ignored it right so i was like eh. you know because i thought oh the impeachment that makes sense but yeah sickness tumors you know disease virus so to answer jonathan's question what do you think julie because we spoke about this last night you you spoke about the same thing that's why i saw yeah. you biting your lip like <laughs> it's it's interesting because you know going back to the saturn pluto conjunction um one of the other people in the um true sidereal astrology world uh kim lovelace in uh britain she yeah. talked a lot about that conjunction and how we had world events so this isn't just yeah. the u.s and their impeachment this is world this is global yep. so we had um one of the big ones was, I think, and don't quote me on this, you can look it up, but it's something around like the end of World War I happened yeah. or the start of World War I. So there was some cataclysmic global event. Yeah, World War I, um, the end of World War II, the Great Depression. The, yeah, and the major recession here, which had global effects. Yeah, in 86, yeah. the recession, the Reagan recession. Yeah. Yep. And that then all sat in pool. Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh, and there was another. Uh, when it came within a couple of degrees of conjunction back in April of last year, that's when the three churches burned, Notre Dame. Oh, yes. Yeah. Remember that? The three. But yeah. That the, deal. the breaking um, of old paradigm, right? Yes. Remember? Yes. yes. Yeah. I but, think we quoted all that. We were all going back and forth on the revolution page. Like, saying, uh -huh. yeah, this is real. <laughs> So the Pluto-Jupiter, what, what I'm seeing with that is, you know, again, we still have Saturn influences right now in terms of paradigms and structures, because again, it's in retrograde, it's a big, and mm -hmm. Saturn to me is the planet that actually crosses both the collective and the individual. It really sits on that boundary mm -hmm. between both. And, mm -hmm. and I think like going to what Kat was saying, you know, we got to look at the structures that we have and, and the things that are being told to us. And I think the Pluto-Saturn or Pluto-Jupiter conjunction tells us, expand your thinking, really broaden and question. Whatever oh, wow. you believe, I respect all of that, but it's up to you to question what you're reading, seeing, hearing, yes. digesting, whatever have you. And I go with the, here's the Neptunian retrograde, go with the gut. Yeah. If if it doesn't stink right in your gut, there, then start the questioning. Start mm -hmm. pursuing, you know, authentic places that have no vested yeah. interest in what the information is. Mm -hmm. Follow the money, follow the power, and if there's a connection there, then it stinks. Yeah. I mean, this is my personal opinion, and I, again, I respect everybody else's. Yeah. But mm -hmm. there was another little blurb that was on talking about the numbers. Again, structures, transformation, paradigm. So talking about these spikes going up, and I don't want to get into the minutia of it, but the gist yeah. of it was, if you look at the number of testing going up, the number of positives and cases are actually going down. Oh, but really? But they don't talk about the it. The data of the test, that makes it sound like we have a spike. Yeah. And, and it's just like anything. You have more information, more data. It looks like there's more instances of it. Yeah. So just, just be discerning. And ask the question again. Look at go with the gut. 
if it doesn't feel right, there's something stinky in Denmark there. So yeah, yeah, and isn't it like that? Jupiter is also. I mean, one key word if I can think of Jupiter is the higher truth. Boom. Yeah. Jupiter. Yeah, the and expanding your thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. for the collective, I yeah. think this the collective needs to step back and go. What does this look like to me as an individual, and how do I bring that out to everybody else? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping also that this conjunction will be with the transformative and empowerment of Pluto is I, I'm hoping what it'll do is in the expanded thinking process is get people to stop being so freaking ass judgmental about what you're doing and what I'm doing and you're wrong and I'm right. Stop that shit. Yeah. What you think that's because of the Neptune you're saying? Well, I'm hoping that with the, the conjunction that we'll start seeing some, you know, reconsideration of how we, mm. you know, envision our own empowerment and transformation yeah. and standard thinking you know what's great for cat or what's great for ike or what's great for joy yeah. may not be great for me but i can still respect it and i don't have to judge you for it as long as you're not hurting me who gives a yeah shit? yeah mm -hmm. and don't judge me for my shoes yeah. and how i'm doing and managing all of this so i think yeah. it's it's an expanded thinking process a bigger yeah. picture thinking there's more to the story all right so, so yeah okay, that's yeah that sounds good anybody want to chime in with that talk about that they the only it. thing I would suggest also is that this new moon is going to, uh, excuse me, the full moon. Yeah. In Sagittarius and the sun's going to be in Gemini. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be, you know, some truth thinking, communication. I'm hoping, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because being that this is the third one, this is like calling people on some bullshit maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, Sagittarius is all about truth and, yeah. you know. The arrow of truth, right. Mm-hmm. So of that's Gemini, the duality of truth and, you know. Yeah. Exactly. I kind of see that. And then it's the communication and exchange of ideas. Yeah, exactly. You know, how, how do we get past the duality? Yeah. Uh, and it'll be Gemini season, too. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, of course, because sun and Gemini. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's great. It's crazy yeah. stuff. That's happening. Yeah. Crazy stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it now because um, it's eight o'clock and I just want to do these for an hour. Just keep it fresh. So I'm going to, I might, I might, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to do these on Monday or Wednesday. I think Wednesday seems okay. How does that seem for everyone? Monday, Monday better. Mon That's Monday? Just... Maybe I'll go back okay. and forth and see what sticks. <laughs> but maybe if it's Monday, I might, I mean, I hope, you know, I'm, I'm going to be like on my boat. So. So I, I might be like with a, you know, with a sunset and, and I hope you guys are not in your office getting all jelly. So. We can be, but it would be nice. Because I come back home Monday nights. I leave Monday night. So I might just like be there and then after and then go home. So. That's kind of cool though. <laughs> yeah, it might be nice. We could probably, I can share my sunsets with you if it's cool, you know, so we'll see. I'm down. That's, <laughs> I'm not going to be mad at you. <laughs> So maybe we'll try Monday. We'll see how that rolls. And then and then I'll try another Wednesday and we'll see what sticks. You know? And I won't be jelly because I'll be there with you. Oh, yeah. Hillary will be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Love you. We'll be, we'll be hanging out in the sunset. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's CGI. It's not real. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like Joy. Joy. Look at Joy. She's like, she's like hanging on a beach. <laughs> I'm so right? ready. Yeah, yeah, Joy's chilling on the beach at a Korean yeah, beach. San Diego. Hey, you want visitors? Yeah. <laughs> anytime, <laughs> you guys. Anytime. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, peeps. All right, my celestial scallywags. Love you all. And um, catch you probably Monday or Wednesday, right? I'll, I'll let you, you'll, you'll see the emails and then boom, it's done. So we know. All right. Yep. I saved Bye. the chat. So if you want me to send it to you. Oh, I shoot. I'm going to do that too. Wait, where, where do I do that? Um, you know, down in the lower corner where it says everyone file and the three dots. Yeah. Click oh, the three yeah. dots, save, save chat, that. and then it saves it as a text file, but at least you have the text. You don't have to keep writing all this stuff down. Oh, cool. Show and folder. All right. Uh -huh. Great. I got it. All right. Um, oh, it saves right in the folder that it, okay, great. Perfect. Yep. Yep. It'll go right in with your video recording. Nice. All right. Okay. All right. All right, to the stars, everyone. See ya. Bye, guys. Bye. Um, yeah. Thank you.